So um, we are Intertrust. We are a uh, long, well-experienced company. We were founded in the early 90s based on a lot of patents to invent DRM. So these are where we are. We have issued over 20 billion DRM licenses in the last year. Um, we continue to serve lots and lots of clients. Our customers are everywhere and a who's who of media, uh, broadcast, uh, devices, um, all these people you can see on this slide are, are huge. That's how we got to 20 billion licenses. And I think this is the point at which we go to um, the primary pieces that we're talking about here today are three things. We are multi-DRM, so we support DRM and have done for 30 years. Um, multiple DRMs, our DRMs are supported in every device and every device manufacturer and every service provider has a license from us to use our technology. We also have these things called token rights management. These have to do with how you manage the rights to um, things that are not fungible. So fungible things are things like DVDs or downloads or streams, but non-fungible things, things, or also fungible things are like gold bars or currency. These are all fungible. Non-fungible things are things that are unique, like your driver's license or your car registration. Our, our grandchildren will look back and say, do you mean you used to have a driver's license in your wallet and the car registration in your glove box and your home deed in a file drawer? It's ridiculous. Now everything lives online. Things will be that way. We provide the underlying infrastructure that supports all of that that will exist um, going forward. We also support all sorts of uh, integration across various blockchains, various platforms. We are fully interoperable. Um, so what we provide to our customers is a minting engine, which allows them to create NFTs or create, uh, uh, we prefer to call them collectible. So if you are collecting things, whether they are sports cards or video clips, or shoes, or any kind of physical object that we can also support. Um, we support super distribution. So this is, I can buy something and I can sell it to somebody else and they can sell it to somebody else or I can rent it or lend it. And we do all this with our smarter contracts. They are smarter than the traditional Ethereum smart contracts because they can support all kinds of business models. Anything from, if I say, you can only watch this video on Tuesday afternoons from 3.30 to 5 in standard def, but between 6 and 7, you can watch it in high def. We can support that. Um, so the various business models that we support are buying, selling, renting, auctioning. These are for physical goods and for digital goods. You can resell with all the business models I was just discussing, anything that you want to do from a resell perspective. You can optimize your customer relationships. You can have a direct relationship with your consumers. Many people who sell products sell them through third parties. This gives you a direct connection to your customer. You're going to allow your customers to loan things. If you buy the digital version of the new Salvador Mundi, uh, digital representation of the uh, Leonardo da Vinci painting, you can loan it to someone. You can set the rules so that when they loan it, the original purchaser can't watch it, or when they loan it, they can, or they can loan it to four people at the same time. This is all supported. We also have some partners where we are supporting fractional ownership. People can buy copyrights. I can be a songwriter and a recording artist, and I can sell fractional shares of my royalty stream, and that royalty can be managed uh, in us, by us. Um, and we also support physical goods. We'll show you some examples later. Um, so uh, Guido will show you the demo. Well, thanks, Albi, for the... So this is a demo of our market maker. So what is market maker? It's, like, it's nothing else than a set of tools and services that allow you to create a marketplace. So I'm talking about broadcasters can either create the, the marketplace from scratch, or they can create can extend the market, an existing marketplace. So the demo that we just see here is targeting the broadcaster. So you think about it, you have uh, that, that the user is in, in his room, is like he's watching a live stream or his favorite like, uh, football match or favorite 
like a football team, suddenly there is a notification on the HBTV application, for instance, that indicates that I, there is something going on in the marketplace that is provided by the, the, the service provider. So suddenly, with a, with a with a remote control, you can open up the, the you can access the marketplace. That's the, of course is personalized to the particular account. So in this case, it's going to be welcome back, Halby. And some of these, and now there are like a set of items on uh, available for purchase or to do other other option for, to do other operation with it. For instance, they can be digital assets where you can find the the matching goal that is of the particular, uh, the, the last minute there was a matching goal and uh, match winning goal. So like, here we go, you can buy it. That's a limited edition. And then, um, and then eventually, once you bought it, you can then, as Albi mentioned earlier, you can resell it, you can lend it, you can, you can do pretty much anything you want with it, according to the rights that are set by the content owner. Now, um, so, but it's not just about digital asset. We also like to create a binding between what is the, the live stream that you see with also physical items. So in this case, we have merchandise. And uh, for instance, they can be associated to the particular match. There is the ball that has been used into the match that now is available for bidding. So now to the marketplace, you can create bidding for the particular object. So what happens when you bid is that uh, you have this this ball now is open for bidding. And uh, the interesting thing, there is an NFC. So the ball, in this case, will have an NFC tag that allow the user, once he receives the goods, to verify the genuity and the provenience of, of, the, particular, of the particular item. And uh, then, of course, again, you can have the digital twin that can be used in what you call it, metaverse, or the digital, uh, or, and then they can also resell the ball into a second market or, or uh, as the user likes. Um, the other things that also we have, we also have a, a mobile application that, uh, uh, in this case, you can access it through a QR code or directly through the operator application, depends on what kind of user experience the operator wants to give. And then this will bring the same type of experience that you have on the, on the uh, or extend the experience that you have on the, on the main screen to a secondary screen. So if so I can just add a word about yep. the uh, service provider position in this, what you would probably want to do is after every goal, you would want to make a short clip of that goal and make that available. So whenever I saw a goal, I would click on this and I would say, this is the goal that I can buy at this moment. And I can put it in my shopping cart or I can buy it or I can save it for later or if you're an operator and your consumer has an app that runs on their phone, you could save it in that app. But it's a way to timestamp things and make them available dynamically. You would probably change the QR code at the time of the goal. So it's flash one up and say, here is a fresh one. It's all about operator experience. We don't build your operator side of the equation, we just build the technology underlying how to make all this fit together. Yeah. Right, so we, we provide all the infrastructure to take, let's say, the goal or another, another clip or, or an image to be encrypted, DRM protected, and therefore like uh, then available, there will be a, a token that is going to be minted for that particular image that then will allow you to guarantee who is the ownership, what's the ownership, what's the genuine of the thing, and so forth. So now, like, if you go back to the, to the demo back here, so if I buy, eventually, we'll, uh, you, you can purchase the, the item. And then we support various type of, we support the regular currency as well as crypto wallets. Depends on what is the flavor of the marketplace that the customer wants to build. Set that, once you confirm the purchase, then pretty much you are done. And thank you very much. We are done with the demo. Yeah, you can go back to the, to the deck. So, um, so here are some of the, the partners that we're working with and some of the ways that they are rolling it out. So there's a company called Nikajirashi, or the parent company is Roadstead, I guess. Um, and they are providing infrastructure for film producers uh, in Japan. The people they work with uh, won the Academy Award last year for Drive My Car. This year, their new movie, Following the Sound, is in, shown in the Venice Film Festival. But this year, the movie will be only available um, 
in the theaters and as an NFT. So they will be making this available for people to buy on our platform, and that's how you can see the movie at home. Uh, another company we're working with is um, uh, Music Securities. These are people who sell fractional ownership uh, in the music space. So if I'm a songwriter um, and I want to sell fractions of my songs, I would use Music Securities to do this. So this is particularly good for young artists. Maybe I'm a, a budding uh, artist and I have a thousand followers who really like me and they want to spend $100 each. That gives me $100,000 with which to make my album and put together my tour. And for that, in exchange, I give them a share of my royalties. It's also valid or valuable for aging artists. We're talking to some major artists with a company that is doing this with us out of the UK, some of the big 60s artists from the 60s who are aging, who just want to cash out um, on their catalog. Um, we, uh, another company that's doing this in the music space with us is a company called Go Goods. Um, what they do is um, they sell digital downloads of music, primarily concerts. So the idea is you go to a concert, there's a QR code on the screen, you look at the QR code with your phone, and then you can buy the recording of that concert. And this is, we're talking to people who do uh, major shows. It's particularly useful for jam bands or for bands where the show is different every night. So for a Grateful Dead or Dead & Company or Fish, where you have different shows, these are particularly valuable and they trade those. Now they would be sold and they could be resold on the marketplace. I could share mine with you. If the, if the band says that you're allowed to share it with other people, you would be allowed to share it. You'd be able to re-rent it. You'd be able to um, resell it. Um, they could have a limited edition where you might have only 10 copies of this show were sold, and they might be sold for $100 each, and you might resell them for $1,000, and the contracts that we support could stipulate that the original seller, the original artist, would get a percentage of that, anything you want to stipulate, uh, based on above a certain amount or below a certain amount or a percentage, however you want to do it. Um, one of our other uh, interesting partners is a company called Medium. This is uh, Sean and Jesse Rademacher. Um, uh, uh, Sean was the, uh, the lead designer at Adidas. He was responsible for the Yeezy sneakers, for the Pharrell sneakers. And they have reached the point where they can uh, print sneakers uh, from a 3D printer as effectively and as efficiently and as inexpensively as you can have sneakers manufactured in bulk. So they are making the ability to design and sell sneakers to the masses. So you can have your sneakers designed even if you're a tier two or a tier three player and you only have enough people to buy 100 or 1,000 of your shoes. Um, additionally, they're active in the metaverse. So um, you can, if you buy the sneakers, you can resell, you can wear them in the metaverse, but you can also resell the shoes. Um, you could lend them to someone and you have a provenance. We have an app that runs on the phone and you swipe the QR code as you do with any other good that has a QR code in it. I mean, it's a, um, uh, NFC. A, an NFC in it. So they have NFC tags and you can swipe that and prove that it's yours and it's a legitimate, it's a legitimate shoe that you own. We're doing the same thing with someone we can't announce yet for vinyl discs where you have um, Q, uh, 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 NFC chips on the disc and you confirm that it's your disc originally. You also get a digital version of it that you can download. So you don't even have to play the vinyl disc. You can save it in its pristine fashion and you can resell it and you can allow people to listen to your copy or again loan it, rent it, anything that the original content owner allows you to do. Thank you for your time. Come visit us next door. Have a great day.